in the history of gaming, few things are as technically frustrating as a poorly implemented camera, something which many a title has grappled with. The day of disaster. Here are my records of this event. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 video games with the worst camera. As indicated by the title, we're looking at games plagued by troublesome camera angles or questionable camera controls. Not by intentional design, but rather because of a lack of forethought. <laughs> the first few entries on this list aren't necessarily bad overall because of the camera, but for the later entries it was inexcusable. Transforming him into the devil incarnate. Number 10, Resident Evil series. Like I said, I'm not leaving this cell. Ah, classic survival horror. How you fascinate us with your clunky design. The first three Resident Evil games established themselves early on to be very particular in their setup. B-grade horror imagery, married to elaborate conspiratorial plot lines and a blend of puzzle solving, exploration, and resource limited action. However, the games conveyed these admirable elements by ways of fixed camera perspectives, with the controls occasionally switching directions and the player's sense of their environment kinda limited. It makes sense then that Code Veronica would mark the shift away from fixed angles. Arbitrary restriction makes for unhappy gamers. Hang in there, Ben. <sighs> Number 9, Ninja Gaiden. It's quite a good game in terms of revamping source material and showing off its system's capabilities, but it is not without its missteps. Developed for the Microsoft Xbox, that's the first one, 2004's Ninja Gaiden gave players an awe-inspiring mix of brutal violence, intricate hack-and-slash combat mechanics, and fittingly difficult foes. Yet there was a notable design choice that to this day raises eyebrows. The Xbox controller's right thumbstick puts you in a first-person view, rather than just letting you control the camera that you're already looking at. It can be really distracting, to say the least. Number 8, Epic Mickey. Talk about good intentions being undercut by the execution. The brainchild of Deus Ex director Warren Spector, Epic Mickey was meant to mesh Mickey Mouse and company to a darker, steampunk-esque setting in order to emphasize Mickey's adventure-seeking qualities. What resulted was an intriguing platformer with one key flaw. Its camera angles interfered with the gameplay. Mickey often was obscured from the player's view, with scenery often getting in the way of one's ability to properly traverse environments without careful adjustment. Number 7, Final Fight, Streetwise. Questionable from a conceptual standpoint, Streetwise didn't help its case with its spotty camera. Yeah, whatever. Listen, I'm thinking about fighting again. Ah, come on, Cody. Not again. I said listen, Kyle. Based around free roaming through a mission-filled cityscape, the game fell flat in combat encounters due to its camera being unreliable in keeping your character in focus. Matters reach peak unpleasantness in corridor-based fights. The player can be very easily surrounded by foes and trapped in corners, with the camera getting caught on surfaces. We're not really surprised that the gaming community at large didn't take to this concept. So, wanna celebrate? <laughs> already am. Number 6, Tomb Raider, The Angel of Darkness. <laughs> Acting as Core Design's final entry into the Tomb Raider franchise, The Angel of Darkness was no stranger to design flaws, least of all with regards to its camera. Our heroic treasure hunter Lara Croft was once more tasked with fighting enemies, carefully climbing and jumping through levels, and solving puzzles, while this time tied to a slow-to-maneuver camera view. <laughs> Shifting the player perspective is sluggish in nature, sometimes leading to the camera getting stuck in awkward places whenever Lara attempts to run. Things like this make us think that this game could have used another pass through the quality control process. Number 5, Prince of Persia 3D. The 
age of early 3D gaming was a strange and unrestrained time. Out of that era came the final installment of the original Prince of Persia series, bringing its patented action platformer gameplay to the third dimension. That translated into levels where one's point of view was restricted to just behind the eponymous prince, obscuring things from an upcoming room's details to how far of a jump lay ahead. It's an extra layer of challenge that wasn't asked for and quickly overstayed its welcome. <laughs> Number 4. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 <laughs> Let's get this over with. The Sonic Adventure series may have its problems, but they don't come close to the issues on display here. Amid other grave technical flaws, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 has the unfortunate fate of being plagued by a disorienting camera view. This is a particular problem during the game's high-speed segments, where the camera will sometimes shift its position without warning. Besides causing the player to become disoriented, this has the added effect of leaving them vulnerable to unintentional deaths, from falling off of loops to running into bodies of water. Calling this one rough around the edges would be charitable. <laughs> Number 3. Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days Don't worry, everything will work out fine. You'll be on that boat in a couple of days. As hard as it is to get worked up here, there's legitimate grievances to be had. One thing that becomes immediately apparent when experiencing the 2010 shooter is its attempt to mimic low-quality video productions. I don't have time for this! The titular anti-heroic criminals are constantly followed by a handheld shaking low-fidelity camera, with firefights punctuated by artifacts and other distortions. Jesus, man! The camera's constant movement and tendency to become awash in abrasive visual elements has reportedly caused players to become physically ill. This whole found footage idea was a nice try to mask bad programming, but a bad camera is still a bad camera. Song Su is more happy. He will kill every one of you. Number 2. Genji Days of the Blade. <laughs> We're no stranger to action games, but this feels more than a little counterintuitive. A thousand apologies. Days of the Blade picks up three years after the PlayStation 2 title, Genji Dawn of the Samurai continuing the series' tradition of hack-and-slash battles loosely rooted in Japanese history. With giant crabs, of course. Sadly, the game features a forward-facing camera that obscures any action and enemies that are directly behind the player. It also has the overall effect of limiting one's view of combat, meaning that quick reflexes and sheer intuition are key to successes here. Ah, I love the capital. Even in a place like this, beautiful maidens abound. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Castlevania 64 Innovating a series' core gameplay sometimes requires mistakes, and this is unfortunately one such mistake. Castlevania 64 stands as the first 3D game of the franchise, introducing mechanics such as 3D environments and enemies, a lock-on system, and anxiety-inducing level design inspired by survival horror games. This makes it all the more jarring, then, that the central platforming gameplay is the weak link, a direct result of the camera obscuring the nature of the jumps. A mere hop from ledge to ledge becomes a guessing game where trial and error, coupled with a bunch of leaps of faith, are the best approach. Game design at its finest, folks. Do you agree with our list? This looks like some serious shit. What games do you feel have poor camera design? For more polished top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. <laughs>